when uh, Alfred Wainwright finished his seven guidebooks to the Lakeland Fells, he then popped over the Pennines to the Yorkshire Dales. His favourite dale was Swaledale. Most people perhaps would approach that dale from Richmond or perhaps via the Buttertubs Pass from Hawes in Wensleydale. Now my preferred route and the way I would always take my students could have been similar to Wainwright's and that is from Cumbria, Kirby, Stephen, going over a high moorland road via Birkdale and dropping down into the dale at Kelt. And that is where I'm going to start this programme. This is not a place to break down or run out of petrol. It will be a long walk, but do stop for photos. Indeed, the first communities on our route would have a long way to travel for a supermarket, and you don't see many buses either. Before the first village, or is it a hamlet, stop off at Wainworth Force and have a bit of fun with different shutter speeds. meet the local community before taking a footpath to Catrake Foss, but wear boots because the final few yards, depending how close you wish to approach the falls, are very rough and you might end up with a close encounter you don't want. Kell's cluster of stone cottages are at an important crossroads for two long-distance trails, the Pennine Way and Wainwright's coast-to-coast -coast walk that has increased in importance and popularity over the years. After Keld, the road forsakes the main dale for a couple of miles as it makes its way to the next community, Thwaite. Walkers sticking to the Pennine Way keep to the dale, missing one of Swaledale's most celebrated views, the vista down the dale towards Muka, the fields dotted with stone barns, an instantly recognisable and much-loved picture. There is no car park, but room to pull over and even a seat nearby. Way even misses out Muka, but not the road, a village having great photographic potential, and perhaps most importantly, a pub. However, before you slake your thirst, and assuming that travel is by car, after Thwaite, take the road to Hawes via Buttertubs Pass. Not perhaps photogenic, but undeniably fascinating, where deep limestone shafts sink 66 feet into the ground, disappearing from view, so be careful. In former days, when goods were taken to market, farmers would rest here, and during hot weather, butter would be lowered into the shafts, keeping it cool, which is how the pass obtained its name. Photographically, you may find the views more interesting and worth the diversion, but I always take the shafts whilst passing, especially if the light is in my favour. Back at Muka and after refreshment, I offer my students a viewpoint that I discovered many years ago and not so well known. I have outlined it on the map, and it's not far. 
But the last few yards can be wet underfoot, even though we are still on a public right-of-way. The glory of this view, in fact there are two, are back to the village and up that part of Swaledale, missed by the car, but enjoyed by the walkers on the Pennine Way contouring Kisden Hill. That's the one on the left. So where now? If you have time and plenty of petrol, continuing down the dale to Richmond has much to commend. Alternatively, explore butter tubs after Muka, and then continue to Hawes, visiting Hard Rock Foss on the way. This is Wensleydale, yes, famous for cheese made famous by Wallace and Gromit, and still produced in the village. A return to Kirby Stephen can be made via Garsdale and Malastang. 